everybody on The Square. Today we have a very special guest on this episode of the Square Community Spotlight. His is the first face you see when you go to schoolofmotion.com. We have the one and only Earl Kabuhat. Earl, thanks so much for being here. Hey, Andrew. Thanks for having me. All right, Earl. So first and foremost, where can we find your work online? Uh, you can catch my work uh, on my website, earl.media. Uh, since Earl.com was uh, obviously taken. But uh, you can also catch my work on uh, Instagram. Um, my handle is Earl.Kabuha, my last name. Uh, that's that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and I usually just like to set the stage um, with a little bit of background. So if you could, could you tell us briefly what you do and then backtrack and how you got there, sort of the origin story of Earl? Sure. Uh, so currently, uh, not too long ago, I started working with uh, the very good folks at Newfangled Studios, where they're located in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I'm a motion designer there. Uh, in terms of how I got there, uh, I've been in the industry for a while, um, but uh, I went to local colleges here. I'm, I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, which is central Canada, if you're not familiar with that place uh we're like right above north dakota for my u.s folks uh we're known for the winnipeg jets if you watch hockey at all uh i i don't (laughs) 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 uh but uh let's see so i don't i don't know how far back i should start but uh, i used to i used to draw uh, as a kid um i thought i was very artsy fartsy growing up um always copying like comic book characters and everything uh, upgraded to like a really old window machine windows machine my mom had in, at home and was doing like what they call now it's like pixel art uh, using uh, windows paint nice. and, then, um, and then the like digital programs started opening up uh, uh, and started becoming somewhat popular I went to a college here uh, taking one of those um, which they called back then uh, like a multimedia course where you get your feet wet with web design and graphic design, 3D and everything. Um, and a little bit of uh, backstory as well. So, so I went to college uh, like a year or so after high school. And after I graduated college, uh, I, kind of, I kind of fell off the boat in the, uh, you know, in, in applying for a job and, and putting myself out there. So I was kind of... Uh, know a quote-unquote like just stupid lazy kid and uh, (laughs) didn't apply myself um so i ended up not um you know capitalizing on that uh diploma that i got i ended up working at a a call center for longer than than i wanted to but then within that time i was like i'm like what do i want to do with my life kind of thing so i actually went back to college uh, a different college at that time uh, taking another one of uh, those courses where, you know, graphic design, 3D and everything. And that's when I was kind of like, uh, kind of determined and motivated to like, this is what I want to do in my career. And on top of that, it also helped that uh, I paid for my own tuition. <laughs> so it was like, there's it was, it was a lot on the line. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I graduated and then luckily a month or so after that, uh, I started working at uh, a marketing agency for two to three years. Um, and I jumped from that to uh, Global Television, uh, which is a, like a news media company uh, across Canada, uh, doing client services there, promo work. Uh, again, uh, this is like motion, motion graphic stuff. Uh, from there, uh, I had seen an opportunity at CBC, which is uh, like Canada's broadcasting uh, corporation. And yeah, I seem to love media seems to love me, I guess. But uh, I, I started doing, um, let's see, on air uh, motion design with, and, and it wasn't like your typical like you know, over the shoulder graphics or anything, not nothing like that, but they did like um, in story animation, whether they needed like a map for a story, whether it, it was like uh, uh, a minimal 
animation they needed within a story to explain the story better. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we kind of evolved doing online explainers, doing more uh, online work. Uh, uh, yeah, we kind of got our, our, our feet wet with, with a bunch of stuff um, in the digital realm because that's where everything was headed. Uh, so I was there for actually the longest time. At the uh, CBC? At the CBC. I was there yeah. for like, uh, I want to say eight, eight years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but my last year or so there, uh, I was, uh, you know, I was kind of hitting a plateau, uh, in, in like internally, I was, I wasn't seeing any growth within myself. Uh, I wasn't being challenged enough. And then, so I started, uh, I think coincidentally when like COVID started, I started looking around what's available. Uh, what's out there for me, not just locally, but, um, you know, remote is becoming more and more common nowadays. Mm. I'm like, what, what kind of opportunities are out there? So I'm reaching out to people, uh, you know, you know, picking brains of, of some of my colleagues and everything. Um, and then lo and behold, like the place that I, I didn't reach out to reached out to me, which was new thing called, which was, which is uh, a little well, ironic. A that's a compliment. I, yeah. So I was, uh, I mean, it was, it was also, it also helped that uh, I was familiar with them. You know, Michaela has been on the School of Motion podcast a couple mm -hmm. of times. Mm -hmm. So I was familiar with them and their work. So that kind of helped my, uh, myself familiarize my, uh, me with, with their work and everything. Um, but uh, we had a couple of uh, video conversations um, and, I really liked her. Uh, uh, she she liked me and, and my work, obviously. And we kind of just hit it off. And I have been working there since this past September. And you work remotely from Winnipeg? I work full-time remote uh, from Winnipeg. Uh, they have invited me over there. I was there. Um, when was I there? Like sometime before winter. Uh, or, or when winter kind of started. Yeah, uh, and it was it was and it was pretty much a, a meet and greet, and everybody's like super awesome, super talented, uh, it, and it was one of those things where, at the CBC, like <clears throat> Winnipeg is, you know, uh, a smaller city, smaller market compared to, like a Vancouver or like a Toronto, like a mm, um, yeah, or like like in North America in general. Um, so, but uh, growing up, like I was born and raised here. Um, but growing up here, um, I felt that working at the CBC was like, uh, I, I felt I got paid well. Uh, I felt they had really good benefits. I have a wife and a kid. So uh, at the time, it was like having somewhat of those golden handcuffs. And, yeah. it, and it was a really hard decision to make. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, at, after a few conversations with my wife, I was like, you know, I, I just, we both just felt like, you know, I should do uh, what makes me happy at mm -hmm. the end of the day. And, uh, you know, I, I don't regret making that decision going to New Fangos because they're, they're awesome, awesome people that do awesome, awesome work. And just out of curiosity, because I feel like there's a lot of people who take School of Motion courses looking to make a similar transition. They're maybe in that golden handcuffs or copper handcuffs situation, whatever situation, and they want to make that jump. Like, what was it that, uh, like, stuck out to you as, like, you know, I really, was it, there was a lack of challenge or the projects weren't the sort of work you were doing or, I guess, what was it that that you yeah. wanted that you weren't getting? And how, oh, I guess, and how did you know that it was time? Yeah, I mean, it's always, uh, for me, it's always, like, an internal feeling that, um, you know what, uh, for the last X amount of months or past year or something, uh, you don't feel fulfilled. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and like, uh, a lot of times you can also see that, um, it also shows in your work, whether you're doing, you know, the same damn thing or, or you don't even have any pieces that you're proud of, uh, that you've updated on your portfolio for the past year. Yeah. So it was, it was, it, but I think, um, for the most part, it was more of a, an internal feeling that, um, you know, I don't, I don't feel any growth in me. I don't feel being yeah. challenged. 
and you just hit a plateau that um you know if you're like a lot of people uh that uh, uh, are passionate about this then you're going to want to move on and and uh and that i mean that's my advice for for people that do uh, are in the same are in the same boat that uh yeah money is important but it's like um you know if you love this stuff enough then theoretically it should work out for itself yeah yeah Absolutely. Well, you, you hit that right on the head, and I hope that helps somebody out there. Because I know you know people take school of motion courses for the reason to upgrade their skills for maybe yeah. a transition like that. Um, and I feel like so newfangled. We hit the kind of we brought ourselves up to date, right? I didn't want to cut you off. You're right. Yes. Newfangled. Yeah. Yeah. Could I? I'd love to backtrack just a little bit, if you don't mind, to the uh, some of the stuff you talked about. Um, sure. So when you went back to school. This, you said you, the, on your own dime after the call center, what did you, did you study motion design? Yeah. So I went to a college here and it, again, it was one of those colleges where I, I learned um, animation and graphic design and 3d. Uh, and then I just, I, I literally just didn't look for a job afterwards <laughs> okay. and then started working at a call center. Uh, so I had some knowledge, but obviously after a few years, it kind of, yeah, dwindled the way, so to speak. Uh, so, but I had this, I don't know, somewhat of an epiphany that I'm like, you know what, this is what I want to do with my life. And then I went back to school. Right. And when, uh, when you went back to school, what did you study? Because that was a much more intentional directed move, wasn't it? It was it was literally <laughs> the, the same type of course. Oh, 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 oh OK. <laughs> and then yeah. from there, when you jumped into the marketing um, company or department. Yeah, yeah. Was that motion design right out of the gate, like After Effects? It, and... it, it was. So it was a it was a marketing agency in Winnipeg uh, called Direct Focus. Uh, they're I'm I'm under the impression even up to now their main focus was like web design and graphic design. Mm -hmm. uh, but they had when I had been brought on, um, I think they wanted to invest in a more full time video department where there was uh, three of us. So it was like a small video department yeah. uh, where they, because uh, I'm, I'm assuming before us, they might have just outsourced their their video work, but they were like, you know, we're getting enough. And then they hired uh, three full-timers. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you have any advice? It doesn't have to be necessarily related to your experience, but now that you've kind of have a wider perspective of the industry, do you have any advice for uh, people who might be graduating or finishing a school motion course and are looking for their first motion design job? Uh, I, I think there's a lot of advice uh, <laughs> out there, but I, I would say like, just like anything, um, you know, work your butt off. I know it's super cliche and vague, but work your butt off. And, uh, you know, if you really care about your, your career at the end of the day, then um, it should pay off, right? Uh, another thing uh, is that's not really taught in school is, and I don't, I don't know what the best way of going about it is, uh, work on your communication skills, right? Because like if you, if you, you know, if you don't really know how to talk to people, but you're uber talented and everything, um, that might you know deduct a few points when when you meet people, uh, mm -hmm. but having like a decent, you know, human connection with people is going to help you, you know, get a job or get some gigs. And I just to piggyback on that, if anybody on the square feels like they need to work on their uh, communication skills, you can always start a community spotlight podcast as a guise for just getting to talk to people you want to talk to. I don't know. There you go. You know, anyway, um, <clears throat> that was for free. Uh, the... So at Newfangled, I just like, oh, go ahead. Did you have something? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, because I tell this to to my my family, like my, our younger cousins and everything, that uh, the ones that are specifically like in high school still or, or in college, that uh, not like not a lot of people know this, but I used to uh, apply for jobs uh, regardless or, or not if, if I needed the job. And... So, so I, so job interviews, uh, I, 
I like doing them. One, because I love people and meeting people, but, so it, and I, I wrote an article about it, but then uh, job interviews are great because one, it's good practice for job interviews and just, you know, get, get a, it's, it's, it's like any other skill, right? Yeah, it's, it takes practice. You can't just be like a people person right out of the, right out of the gates. Um, but two, uh, so you meet the person, um, they don't need to know that, I don't know, that you're really not looking for a job at the time, but, <laughs> but if you do meet them, now they know you. And even if you were to respectfully decline, something might come up years later and your, your, your name is now in their Rolodex, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. not only is it good practice, but uh, you're, you're networking, so to speak. That is interesting. So did you ever have any unwanted job offers out of that process? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> to, be, to, be, to be honest, I was like, I was doing job interviews and a couple of them kind of caught on because I, I ask a lot of questions too. And, and they were like, I feel like I'm being interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> well, although that's, yeah, not, but, but, yeah, that's not a bad practice, even if, like, if you no. want the job to make sure it's a good match. If, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, I mean, just, yeah, another tip if you're, if you're going for job interviews. Uh, ask a lot of questions to know that you're really interested in it. Uh, but, but yeah, I did, I did that just to, just to meet folks and just to practice. And I, it's, it's weird because, because I love job interviews. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be the first person I've heard say that, but having heard your whole explanation, it actually makes a lot of sense. It's sort of like free practice. Yeah. 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 And it's, uh, I mean, when I, when I first, started dating my wife she was one of those people and, and a lot of people are like this where they kind of prep and practice bef the day before their <laughs> job interview where yeah. they have like a set list of questions and a set list of answers and i was like no 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 no. i don't like i don't want to do this uh because then it comes off as less authentic it's like writing your resume or whatever but it comes off less authentic and just to um it's it, it doing those job interviews are more of a practice to uh, literally just like meet, get to know them um, so that you can connect more on a, on a personal level than mm -hmm. just more than just the job description itself. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, that, I th that's, that's super solid advice. I would love to flash forward now to get us yeah. back up to present day to Newfangled, um, you know, which is super well-respected studio what's it like working with such a a high like a high profile studio yeah i mean um you know like i i said i was familiar with them and but having met them now and uh having gotten to know their work and everything they're like not only are they super talented but uh just a super good group of people and like mm. i yeah, I, I, yeah, and it, and it's awesome. Like, uh, I'm, it's actually the first studio, actual like you know, studio that that I've worked with. I didn't consider like you know that marketing agency before in the past the uh, mm. studio, um, but like, uh, so I'm I'm you know I'm excited to to learn uh, again. I was this is the exact thing that I was looking for, looking to to grow, to learn from others. Uh, regardless of like, like, and it's uh, uh, a good amount of them. I, I feel like is a, a young group. I don't consider myself super young, but I'm like that. I can care less about that stuff because they're super talented and they're just again a, a super good group of people. Mm. Uh, and like on a day to day basis, could you give me? Because I've never worked for a studio like that. I, I'd love to get like some insight into on a day to day basis. What's what's it like being a motion designer for a studio like Newfangled? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, like typical processes and everything, but uh, okay, are you, are you in After time, Effects or? I am in After Effects. Um, so far, I've had little projects where I've started from beginning to end. Um, half the projects so far, I, again, I, I just started like late last year, but there's been revisions from older projects. Uh, but um, I'm, I am more uh, interested in learning like processes and workflows that that are from beginning to end but so far like I've, I've done one where I've designed and animated something from front to back and 
I think it went well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they do they do everything from like um, you know style frames to to a storyboard to and that's like whether 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 it's on pencil or something or uh, I brought it to Illustrator, and then there's review stages that end up. Uh, and I feel like we're like I was like a middleman where they 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 then connect with the client and then there's approvals. Then it goes to like rough animations and everything up to up to the final details. So. Mm. Yeah, that's <clears throat> excuse me. That's the sort of process I feel like um, I would I would love. To, could you walk me through for for anybody who hasn't really been through the whole process front to back? Maybe they just just started in motion. Could you give an overview of what a, a typical motion design uh, pipeline is from client says I want an animation to deliver? I mean, not every piece, but just the rough stages, just in case someone's not familiar. Yeah, again, again, that was uh, so far. There's only been one where I've been oh, a part okay. of it from front to back. But um, so based on the brief uh, that were provided. Uh, my I'm just trying to remember my role at the time was to create some style frames based on a script that we were given yep. um, from an, an approved script or semi approved script. So once I provide those style frames to my team um, and that's approved, then they provide it to the client. Uh, you know, if, once I get the go ahead on that, then we start kind of uh, laying it out, how, how the laying out how all the frames look like. Uh, for the entire script, um, I'm, I think there was an approval pro, uh, review stage there. Once that's approved, then we then I start animating that. And um, in terms of how many review stages there were after I start animating, I honestly don't remember, or, <laughs> or I don't know how many uh, typical stages there are at that point. But um, you know, you get to a point where. Uh, they provide it to the client and they'll have some feedback. Uh, but theoretically at that point, uh, there should be, there should be uh, like <laughs> little, revi little revisions at that point yeah. because the design's been solidified and everything. Uh, but uh, yeah. And then after, you know, all is said and done. Yeah. That's great. And um, yeah. just roughly what's the, for the length of the animation, about how long did it take to animate that in After Effects? Maybe oh, just man. the maybe just the first draft, just to give us a sense of how long this stuff takes. <laughs> I honestly don't remember. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. At, no, totally fine. Um, I'm just you know trying to get as much information to, that yeah. might be helpful to to people who are trying to get familiar. Um, so. Speaking of newfangled and work, uh, I'd love to transition to take a look at some of your work, if you wouldn't mind. Would that be all right? Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> I'm going to switch scenes here. Um, thanks for having your, your website up. Um, so I guess I usually like to see, is there is there a, um, a project that you would like to talk about? Uh, I mean... I can pick one I if mean, you don't want to. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about this one. And it wasn't, this was like more of a, a personal project. It was uh, when School of, Mo School of Motion uh, does those um, holiday, uh, I forget what they're called, yep. uh, hol uh, alumni holiday card. So it wasn't this past year, but I think it was the year before that. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the theme was, what was it again? I made it through 2020 by... And then, and then you, you put whatever your idea was. But mine was Keeping Busy, uh, which had a mix of like uh, networking for, for personally, if it was networking, um, you know, practicing my animation and everything, uh, scrolling through social media uh, over here that I put Level Up because I had uh, uh, watched that Level Up course through School of Motion. So just the whole mix. So I wanted to transition from a frame of what happened that past year, that I think events that I felt like stood out, whether it was COVID or the whole US uh, election or to the Black Lives Matter thing to just my personal life, um, but just going from one frame to another. Um, have some like rough sketches, oh, nice. super rough, 
I super love rough stuff. sketches here. No, but that's how uh, it works. That's great. Yeah, it was like a huge, uh, it looks like a big mess, but I had, uh, and I forget, I think it was, I want to say Oddfellows who had something similar where they had like a bunch of uh, frames that transitioned into other frames. Um, but uh, oh, nice. Here is how I personally planned it out, where I had to like manually like draw arrows just to plan it in my head how everything would transition. Um, like this one, is awesome. Like, yeah, these frames transitioning to new frames, and then I highlighted uh, which elements were new elements, which I had to do, you know, a new build on. Um, and then, but that was pretty much I, I could play it real quick. Just yeah, to, yeah. Show show everybody what it looks like here. Oh, yeah. so smooth. Yeah, that turned out really well. Do you happen yeah. to uh, general idea about how long did that take you to animate? I know I'm like, oh, how long does this take? Uh, but just to get a sense. I know it was. Uh, I had to do this off and on whenever I had downtime, but mm. um, I want to say a few days of designing and then, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. With, within a, within a week of animating it, maybe? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wanna that, say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I, I think that it's, it's, to watch something so well-designed and so smooth, it sort of invites the suspicion that it just happened really naturally, that, you know, maybe like, a, a couple hours people might look at that and think but it's nice to hear that it takes a lot of time and a lot of thought and development to get i mean just the color palette alone is beautiful um so it's just it's always encouraging to me that if i don't have like some amazing animation in an hour it's okay oh i love that you use yeah. the the nulls on the you connected cyclops. them to the path yeah, yeah or right. with cyclops yeah yeah Cyclops is super helpful for me to think, oh, that's how you did the fire. Could you talk about yeah. that fire with those nulls? Like, what's going on there? <laughs> it's not, it's not, nothing, uh, uh, um, you know, it's not a big breakthrough or anything, but it was literally <laughs> just uh, a wiggle on the, on the, like a Y position. And then I literally just rotated the entire pre comp. So that was yeah. pretty much it. <laughs> well, but the, um, did you use trace paths or um, points follow nulls script? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Just, I love to get as much information as I can because, um, you know, it turned out, it turned out beautifully. Um, yeah, thanks, man. So if you don't mind, let's transition to, um, back to, I'd love to, I'd love to end these with the, the lowlights and highlights section um, where we kind of just hear a few of the, the memorable points of your career and the low light section, it doesn't have to be some big tragic, you know, event. It can be if you want it to be, but I, I'd love to get maybe if there was like a, a moment when uh, you learned a valuable lesson the hard way or some anecdotal lesson would be fine. But is there any low light that sticks out from your career so far that you yeah. feel comfortable talking about? Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, like my, my wife will tell you that I, I like career talk to with whether it's my family or friends or colleagues. But the, the one thing that does stand out is when I did work at um, <clears throat> Direct Focus, the, the marketing agency after college. So I worked there like two to three years. Uh, and that was uh, not to date myself, but it was like from 07 to like 09. Um, and then 08, 09, uh, I believe was when the like recession was happening. So I had uh, gotten let go there for, you know, that. That, that affected them. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, I, I was let go two weeks before I got married. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's terrible timing. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So you can imagine a grown man just bawling in, in, in the office when, when they gave me the news. Wow. And yeah. Did yeah, they know so you were going to get married? I had it booked off and everything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I had it booked off and everything. So uh, it was, yeah, obviously it was a tough decision for them. And it was, you know, obviously just a big, you know, uh, stake to the heart to, at, at the time for me. And just 
the the stuff going through my mind in terms of like how do I tell my fiance and um, <laughs> what's what's our first year of married life gonna look like? Uh, but uh, it was it was kind of like a, I guess you could say a, a blessing in disguise because it's like it was one of the worst things that's happened to me. But after that, uh, it was kind of good that it happened because after that I never took anything for granted afterwards. You know, yeah. you're taking a job that. You know, some people might complain about uh, whether it's the work that they're doing, whether it's their commute to work or everything. But after that, um, and it changes too. Once once you become a, a family man, yeah. it's like you know, all you want to do is put food food on the table and a roof over your family's head, and that's that's all that matters, right? Despite what your career goals are. But uh, it was kind of a, again, it was like a, a blessing in disguise. Mm. Uh, yeah. So after that, what? What did you do? Like, when did you, what happened next? Yeah. Yeah. So after Drive Focus, I had uh, gone, <laughs> uh, I had gone to this, I didn't mention it, but it was this shady marketing <laughs> agency that, uh, <laughs> that up to, up to now still owe people money. But after that, uh, after that shady company, uh, I was out for work for a little bit again, and then I went to global television. Oh, ah, okay, so. there's there it is. All right, I mean, it, and it worked <laughs> out. And now look at you now. You're here. You're newfangled. I mean, yeah. I think a lot of people look at your career and aspire to to have that sort of success. Um, but most, the, probably the the well, yeah, I, the 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 shining star from my perspective of your career is being on the front page of School of Motion. <laughs> uh, I, always, I always forget that my face is on there. But, uh, people I, have to remind me. Yeah, at first I really thought, like, that's got to be a stock photo. But no. <laughs> the, how do you feel about, how do you feel about being on the, being on the front page? It's fine. I mean, they got, they had to pick somebody. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't it's know. a good pick. It's it, good yeah, pick. it's, yeah. it's I, I, I need a new profile pick, but uh, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't, I don't mind it at all. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, coming out of that low light, and we kind of already started into the highlights, but is there a, a highlight that sticks out so far in your career that shines yeah. maybe brighter than the others? I mean, I kind of mentioned it. Uh, I would say, and again, this is because I try to, you know, give these life lessons to to my younger family and everything, but. When I did work at the call center, I had mentioned that, um, you know, you, communication skills is important, right? And this was kind of like uh, uh, something similar, uh, I guess a blessing in disguise as well, kind of kind of thing. But uh, before working at the call center, I always, uh, just like a lot of creatives, I had looked at myself as a big introvert, right? Uh, I, I hated talking. I, I know I said I loved interviews, but <laughs> at the time, at, at the time, I hated interviews. I hated presentations, uh, and I always got nervous just talking to people. But after a few years of working at the call center, that it 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 changed uh, me, like for for the long run. So so I always tell like my younger cousins and everything, like if you're getting uh, a job. Um, you know, uh, either while you're at school or before you uh, uh, go into your big time career, so to speak, get a job with customer service, whether it's talking to people in person, whether it's a call center, whatever, um, just just to get that practice in. Because, uh, again, like, I don't know of any schools that kind of teach that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, don't don't work in the back in the stock room or anything. You're, you're not going to learn anything there like. <laughs> how to talk yeah. to people yeah yeah well and it shows it shows um and this actually leads me right into the the final the final thing because i've hit the end of my outline but i always like to give guests a chance to give any any advice or any message to to other school emotion alumni is there anything that you feel like you could you could pass along to us sure um uh life is too short to not be doing what you love uh, I would say that, uh, and then one other thing I would I would say I'm, I'm trying to like kind of internalize what's been going through my mind for the past whatever three to five years. Uh, I would say everybody has their own path. Um, 
you know, if you have if you have enough perseverance and enough discipline and love in the game, um, and just just have patience and uh, and you'll do just fine. Thanks. Yeah. That yeah. That's awesome. Uh, well, Earl, yeah. it has been great talking to you. Thank you so much for making time to have this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Thanks again for having me. Uh, wishing everybody uh, the best of luck in the new year. All right. All right. Thanks, Earl. All See right. you later. Right. Take it easy.